Light is both a wave and a particle, or at least, that's what we've believed for nearly a century. Since the birth of quantum physics, it has been widely accepted that light exhibits wave-particle duality. This understanding goes back to 1801, when physicist Thomas Young conducted his famous double-slit experiment, demonstrating the wave-like nature of light. However, in April 2025, a paper published in the prestigious scientific journal Physical Review Letters introduced a radical reinterpretation of this duality. In fact, the claims made in the paper go far beyond the double-slit experiment. They challenge some of our most fundamental assumptions about the nature of light itself. The core idea of the paper is far from ordinary. It suggests we may have misunderstood the entire concept from the very beginning. It's worth noting that Physical Review Letters accepts only about 30% of submitted manuscripts. That means this paper is not just speculative, it is being taken seriously by the scientific community. Associate Professor Celso Villas-Boas from the Federal University of Sao Carlos in Brazil and his team propose a bold idea. They suggest that to explain the results of the double-slit experiment, it is not necessary to treat light as a wave. According to them, the observations made in the experiment can also be fully explained by considering light to be purely a particle. While this idea may seem like a purely intellectual curiosity to most of us, it carries far deeper implications for the world of physics. If this perspective is eventually confirmed, it could require rebuilding the foundations of quantum field theory from scratch. And that's still not all. It could also represent a dramatic paradigm shift for photon-based quantum computer architectures. Still, it's wise to remain cautious for now. Because although the claim is exciting, and although an experimental design has been proposed and early steps have begun, it has not yet been fully confirmed by experimental evidence. But in order to truly grasp the core idea of the paper, we first need to clarify what wave behavior means in classical physics. Let's think of it this way. Imagine two waves of equal amplitude. If these waves are out of phase, in other words, if one moves to the right while the other moves to the left, then their peaks and troughs align perfectly in opposite directions. In such a case, the two waves completely cancel each other out and the surface of the water becomes perfectly flat. This is known as destructive interference. The same principle can be applied to light. When two light waves of equal strength but opposite phase meet, they appear to cancel each other out and no light is detected in that region. We say, the light disappeared. But did it really? The pattern we observe in the classic double-slit experiment and the one you're seeing on the screen right now illustrates this phenomenon perfectly. Some photons behave like waves and overlap in opposite phases, canceling each other out. As a result, they leave no mark on the screen behind them. In those areas, the light appears to vanish. Other photons don't align destructively, and they do leave visible marks on the backplate. By the end of the experiment, a characteristic pattern of alternating bright and dark fringes appears. This pattern has traditionally been interpreted as evidence that, in the absence of observation, light behaves like a wave. However, if an observer intervenes during the experiment, in other words, if we determine which slit the photon passed through, the wave-like behavior disappears. The interference pattern vanishes, and we see only two distinct lines. This happens because the act of observation collapses the superposition. The photon travels through just one slit. So in that case, the absence of a wave pattern is entirely expected. This is precisely where the new interpretation proposed in the paper comes into play. The researchers aren't asking whether light truly disappears in the dark regions of the interference pattern. Instead, they question what quantum state the photon occupies at those points. According to their model, photons may still exist in regions where classical physics says light is absent. However, these photons are in such a special state of quantum superposition that they cannot interact with a detector or an observer. In other words, they are physically present, but from a measurement standpoint, they are invisible. These special quantum configurations are called dark states, while those that interact maximally with a detector are referred to as bright states. The scenario you're seeing on the screen right now represents the double-slit experiment explained through this perspective. In regions where photons are in bright states, we see a clear light pattern. In areas where they are in dark states, no visible trace is detected. 
Visually, the outcome resembles the classical wave interference pattern, but the explanation comes from an entirely different principle. With this new approach, there's no longer a need to rely solely on wave behavior to explain the classical interference pattern. The alternating bright and dark bands can now be interpreted as the result of collective quantum superpositions formed by particles, specifically photons. In other words, according to this perspective, we may not need wave dynamics at all to account for what we observe. The particle nature of light, when organized in specific superposition states, can generate patterns that resemble waves, but these patterns are not produced by waves themselves, rather by the quantum structure of photons in superposition. Think of it like this. You have a bell, and only when you ring it at a certain frequency does a nearby dog bark. If you strike the bell at a different pitch, the sound is still present, but the dog doesn't react at all. Classical physics might assume that no sound was there because the dog didn't respond. But quantum physics would say, the sound existed, the dog just wasn't tuned to hear it. The same idea applies to photons. In the dark bands of the interference pattern, light hasn't truly vanished. Rather, our detectors simply can't interact with photons in that specific quantum state. This analogy draws a surprising parallel with dark matter. We know dark matter exists through indirect evidence, but we've never observed it directly. Could this invisibility arise from something like the dark photon states described in the paper? Perhaps dark matter is part of a family of particles that simply can't interact with us. While this question is still speculative, the depth of the ideas presented in the paper opens the door to considering such possibilities. According to the paper, there is no need to invoke wave properties at all. Instead, light is described through special quantum superposition states of photons. Each photon doesn't follow a single path. Instead, it exists in multiple possibilities at once. These superpositions evolve into bright states, where photons strongly interact with detectors and dark states, where no interaction occurs at all. The so-called dark regions, where classical physics would say light has vanished, are actually areas where photons remain, but in a form that cannot be measured. As a result, the interference patterns we observe aren't the result of wave behavior, but of collective quantum structures formed by entangled photons. Even if light behaves solely as a particle, when enough photons are organized in specific quantum patterns, they can generate a structure that resembles wave interference. But make no mistake, this is not a wave. It's a quantum choreography created through the superposition of particles. When we examine the topic within the framework of the double-slit experiment, the remarks of physicist Celso Villas-Boas, one of the authors of the paper, in an interview with New Scientist reveal a striking turning point. He states, The idea that the observer can change reality or the direction of photon sounds a bit mystical, but according to our theory, that's no longer the case. This touches on a long-standing question in the quantum world. Does the observer truly change what happens or simply see what already is? This is at the heart of the measurement problem. But Villas Boas and his team argue that treating light purely as a particle can dramatically simplify this issue. Why? Because under this interpretation, observation is no longer an act of creating reality, but simply a process that reveals which quantum structures are already in a state that can be detected. In essence, Villas Boas is saying this. Photons, like notes in an orchestra, exist in specific quantum states. These states, bright or dark, arise from collective superpositions of multiple photons. An observer or a detector can only interact with these quantum states if they are in a form that allows interaction. So, the observer does not alter reality. They merely reveal which part of the quantum choreography is currently measurable. Measurement is not a choice or a transformation. It is the visibility status of what already exists. When we apply this interpretation to the double-slit experiment, the picture becomes clearer. If there is no observer present, meaning the photons have not interacted directly with any detector, atom, or matter, then it's impossible to determine which slit they pass through. This uncertainty doesn't stem from randomness, but from the principle of quantum superposition. Each photon enters a quantum state that allows it to take multiple paths simultaneously. These paths are not only coexistent, but also become entangled and spatially organized in a collective structure. 
This quantum network is what forms the bright and dark fringes we observe on the detection screen. Yet this pattern is not caused by classical wave interference. Instead, it emerges from the spatial distribution of multimode quantum superpositions, what the researchers call bright and dark quantum states. So the wave-like pattern we see is, in fact, a manifestation of an underlying quantum choreography of particles. But when observation occurs, that is, when the photon interacts with a detector, an atom, or a measurement device, this freedom ends. The act of measurement forces the photon into a specific quantum state. This causes the previously existing superposition to collapse instantly. The photon can now only follow a single path. The possibility of it going through both slits at once disappears. As a result, the delicate quantum structure created by many photons working in unison, the structure that underlies the interference pattern, is destroyed. According to the paper, in this observed scenario, photons also lose their chance to enter a dark state, a state in which they are undetectable, because that entire quantum symphony has already been interrupted. Observation doesn't just finalize an outcome, it dismantles the very quantum architecture that made that outcome possible. At its core, the paper argues that the wave-particle duality of light doesn't actually exist. There's no need to rely on wave theory to explain the behavior of light. The quantum superpositions of particles alone are sufficient. In fact, the age-old debate over this duality seems to be shifting toward a new question. What exactly gives rise to the bright and dark quantum states that form interference patterns? The paper offers a theoretical framework, but it doesn't claim to have solved everything. It's important to note that this is not an experimental study. It's a theoretical and computational work. The researchers didn't perform physical experiments. Instead, they used the mathematical tools of quantum optics to show that classical interference patterns can be explained using a particle-only model. While the paper describes under what conditions these bright and dark states might emerge, it does not yet offer a fully testable experimental setup. However, in an interview with New Scientist, the authors revealed that they are actively preparing for such tests. One of the authors, Villas Boas, stated that a preliminary experimental test using a single charged atom has already been completed. This test appears to support their key assumptions. In it, phonons, quantum packets of vibration, were shown to behave like photons, forming bright and dark quantum states that could explain interference patterns. Still, the results have not yet been published in a peer-reviewed journal. The scientific community has shown strong interest in this work, but also great caution. If true, the implications extend far beyond the nature of light, possibly requiring a fundamental rethinking of quantum physics itself. While many agree that the proposal is bold and worth further investigation, consensus has not yet been reached on its validity. This paper invites us to reconsider how we view the universe, how we measure it, and even how we define reality itself. Though still theoretical, Ideas like these represent the first steps toward technologies, sciences, and philosophies of the future. And that's why we must never stop thinking outside the box. If you found this topic as fascinating as we did, consider subscribing to our channel. It helps us reach more curious minds like yours. We're here because of you.